Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us, or good afternoon to those of you on the East Coast. I'm glad you could spend some time with me this morning. And my friend Judy will be helping us out with the call today. Good morning, Judy. Good morning, Carol, and everybody else on the line. Yeah. So, Judy, if you're ready to get started, I am. <clears throat> Great. Um, well, Carol, oh, I wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry, but I forgot my disclaimer. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Before we get too carried away here, just as a reminder, neither myself or my partner, Jim, are attorneys or tax professionals. Uh, we are not gurus. We don't sell currency. We don't pump currency. We, uh, what we do sell is business trust. And our reason for being here today is to advise you about business trust and tell you why we think it's a good idea to put your uh, foreign currency into a business trust. So now that being said, let's get started. <laughs> okay, great. Carol, I have some foreign currency that I hope will revalue soon. How do I best protect it, a corporation or a foundation or LLC or a trust? Which do you think is the best? Well, you know, both, all of those things have advantages and disadvantages. And at some point you might find some of them very useful, but probably more than you need right now. Uh, corporations, foundations, and LLCs are all state chartered entities. And as such, they must be registered with the state, and they're on public record, so therefore there goes your privacy. You have to pay an annual fee, have a registered agent, in some cases send a copy of the charter or operating agreement to the state. Uh, record keeping can be onerous, especially with corporations. LLCs are a little more forgiving. And the assistance of a lawyer may be needed to operate or uh, create any of these entities. Okay, so um, what about a statutory trust? Well, some statutory trusts have the same requirements as what I just read about corporations, foundations, and LLCs. Uh -huh. uh, with a revocable trust, you have the right to change or cancel at any time until the moment of your death. And while that sounds like it might be a good idea, the problem is because you do have that control, the IRS may consider it part of your estate for taxable purposes. And while tax reform on the federal level is on the table right now, Estates over $5.49 million could be facing a 40% haircut in 2017. Right. While most of us would not be affected by these numbers right now, we may possibly be worth considerably more than that post-RV. And most statutory trusts do not allow you to be trustee of your own revocable trust. So that puts somebody between you and your money, which is really not the best way to go. Uh, some people try to get around that by becoming trustees of each other's trusts, signing blank checks for each other, et cetera, et cetera. And again, while that may sound like an okay idea, people do change. And yes. it may create a very uncomfortable strain on one's relationship. Yes, exactly. <clears throat> so what else would you Carol? I'm here. Yeah, if people are chiming in, that's what you hear the, the touch. Right. Do, okay. do you want me to – so I'll repeat that? Okay, yeah. Num repeat number three, yeah. Okay. What else would you suggest, Carol? Well, I'm here to talk about business trusts. So a contract business trust is a common law document, is legal in all 50 states and common law countries. The right to contract in the U.S. is guaranteed by Article I, Section 10 of the U.S. Constitution, which itself is a common law contract. Uh, the benefits of a contract business trust are many. It is private. It's not required to be registered in any state except Nevada, as far as I know, unless it's actively engaged in operating a business. This, of course, ensures your privacy. <clears throat> Excuse me. There are no annual fees. Record keeping is minimal, and you can do it yourself. One of the big, big pluses I see about the business trust is you can be your own trustee and with full authority to do or not to do anything you want. There is no one between you and your money, and I think most of you will agree that that's a pretty important benefit. Exactly. You can name your spouse. If you're married, you can name your spouse as co-trustee, and one or both of you can become executive trustees, allowing one to act on behalf of the other. You can name your children as successor trustees, we can add a bloodline clause to ensure that your family's generational wealth does not fall into others' hands. 
In other words, you can name your daughter as your successor trustee, but she cannot name her husband as her, either a co-trustee or successor trustee because he is out of your bloodline. Right. And many people are talking about, I've heard about spendthrift trust. We can add that clause so nobody can hypothecate or pledge his or her possible shares of trust income. And you can actually name as many successor trustees as you want. I don't suggest more than three. You can designate two or more, specifying that they all become trustees at the same time, or one goes before the other. We can just, that's however you choose to do it, we can write it that way. <clears throat> okay. So you must be gathering from this that um, the trust that, that I use can be streamlined just for you. Exactly. Uh, you can have certain requirements, certain provisions, that we can add all that. That's very easily done. <clears throat> Excuse me. Awesome. So I've heard that I that I can't be the trustee of my own dress of my own trust. Now you're saying that I can. Well, yeah, you can. It's a great question, and perhaps one of the most frequent one that people stumble over, yeah. including mm -hmm. attorneys, etc. The business trust is not a statutory trust, which forbids you being your own trustee, but it is a contract. And like any other contract, to determine what you can and cannot do, you have to look within the four corners of the contract. And the business trust clearly states you can be, the, the original investor or exchanger can be the trustee. <clears throat> okay, that's excellent. So I've never heard of a business trust before until I started listening to the calls. Would an attorney be familiar with it? Well, if you talk to your attorney about it, they may not be familiar with the name contract business trust, and they probably have heard about a Massachusetts trust. Uh, typically, somebody will tell them about this trust and take it to their attorney, and their attorney says, oh, no, no, that's not any good. Exactly. Because they don't know about it. <laughs> um, <clears throat> excuse me. Some people have <clears throat> taken it to their attorney and said, oh, this is okay. It's a constitutional trust, or it's okay at that. Those guys are pretty well on target. It's a, it can be called a constitutional trust, but it's more familiar, familiarly, oh, it's a good, good word. <laughs> it better, it's better known as a Massachusetts trust. And when the early pilgrims and immigrants came to the American colonies, they brought with them the commonplace ways of doing business from the, from the old country. You know, where king's rule prevailed, going back even to the Crusades. You know, the king decided just about everything. So at that time, uh, the populace came up with a common law trust, particularly to keep property within the family. Uh, but once these pilgrims and immigrants came to the U.S., they were still looking for the same kind of thing. Uh, businesses in the early, I think, 1800s, for some reason, were unable to own property, uh, property by the business. So businessmen at the time looked back to common law to see if there was a way that they could actually have business in a company in an entity name. So due to its commonplace usage in Massachusetts, it became known as the Massachusetts Business Trust. And the trust that we use is based on the Massachusetts Business Trust. That's a mouthful of S's this morning. That's a mouthful, Carol. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Judy, why don't we take a little break here? Okay, ask a question or two. That's a great idea. Yeah. So Q&A is open, folks, if anybody would like to do star six and ask a question. We're here. And Judy and I will continue until I see hand raised. So Judy, number six. Okay. So how do I get my currency into this trust? Well, there are four ways to transfer ownership of any asset by sale, gift, exchange, or assignment. And the business trust uses the exchange method. Okay. So with whom do I exchange? Well, the business trust is contract. So one cannot contract with himself or herself. So we use a curator to effect this exchange. At this exchange, the tech curator temporarily takes title to your assets, in this case your currency, and mm -hmm. transfer them into the trust. As part of the exchange, the creator gives you a total of 100 trust certificate units. This is not a taxable event. 
the creator then appoints the first trustee. And while he or she can name any suitable adult person, we believe that as you were the one that was wise enough to buy all that dinar, you're the most likely candidate to become the first trustee. Right. At that point, the creator exits the, con- exits the contract. And this is a big sticking point for a lot of people. The creator, who do I get? You know, what, what does, and the creator might think, well, what do I have to do? And, you know, the creator can be anyone you choose. A lot of people may be concerned about any future liability in the trust. Once the creator has performed his or her two tasks, the exchange and appointment of the trustee, he or she is released from all future responsibilities, duties, authority, or liability regarding the trust organization. And I think that's something that everybody really needs to um, be aware of because it does seem to be a, st- a sticking point. I know a, one of my clients recently asked his sister to become a trustee, I mean a creator, and seeing how she had no idea what it was about and was concerned about her name being out there for whatever reason, right. she declined to do so. <clears throat> so I would suggest to anybody that if you are thinking about doing a trust, uh, with <clears throat> you have spoken to a cr- possible creator and they have some issues, please have them call me. And I will be happy to explain their exact role and that they do not have any further liability. So I'm happy to do that for you. Okay, that's awesome, Carol. So what if someone like my banker or, you know, private banker, for instance, asks what's, what is the business endeavor of the trust? What's my answer? Your trust is part of your estate planning or asset protection plan. Period. I mean, you don't have to tell them any more. Right. Uh, you don't have, and it's not much less that you can say, but you don't have to tell them any more. One thing I would caution people on is not to say business. And while the best answer is always a truthful one, we suggest that you do not say business, trust to the banker, because then they're going to expect state certification, et cetera, as you would in a typical business enterprise. So, so you just better off referring hey, to it merely as a trust. I'm sorry, Judy. I was going to say so. So you, I'm thinking answering you. You just refer to it as a trust. Exactly. Because everybody knows that word and they don't get all hung up on anything. Yeah. yeah. So that's excellent, Carol. Excellent. I mean, it could, people have come to me. Well, I took this at the bank and they want this. They want want to know where I'm registered and this is that and the other. I said, did you say it was a business trust? Well, yeah. <laughs> Did you read my letter? It says, don't do that. <laughs> so in those cases, I would suggest that they just merely go to a different branch or a different bank. Right. Yeah. And then they're fine. So, okay. Anything else, Judy? Uh, well, we've talked about federal taxes before, uh, but what about state taxes? My state, I live in Virginia, and we have a state income tax. So how will that affect my trust? Well, we suggest utilizing a very common business practice of domiciling the trust in one of the seven states that do not have such a tax. And if you live in one of those states, you know what you know what it is. And while you can domicile in any of those seven states, I suggest now that you stay away from Nevada, and they're right. now treating trusts the same as corporations, foundations, and LLCs, well, with all the same requirements. Uh, we used to send people to Nevada for years. Um, yeah, my corporation's been in Nevada for 10 years. Yeah. I think it was three or four years ago that they came out with these new statutes that this, that trust had to be treated the same as these other entities. So because of that, we now recommend Wyoming. It's easy to get a mailbox with a street address, and there are no stringent laws about business trust one way or the other. And we uh, typically send people to the box shop in um, Cheyenne, Sometimes they have trouble answering their phones. I get that. But there are lots of other places in Wyoming as well. And just as an aside, regardless of where you live, you live in a tax-free state or not, I personally recommend that you get a mailbox near you to to protect your privacy and anonymity. And my husband and I have uh, been in the... Kenmore area in Washington for 25 years, and we've also had a mailbox, a private mailbox, out of our home for that same length of time. It's also a very good place, if you're going to get deliveries, have them delivered there, because there's always someone there. 
um, I strongly recommend that. Obviously not a prerequisite, but it's just a, a really good way to protect your privacy and anonymity. Okay. Do you want to stop for questions? Well, nobody's raising their hand, and um, even though I've mentioned it, so. Okay. So, well, you've mentioned laws about business trusts. Where can I find legal backup supporting them? That's a good question, Judy, because a lot of people are concerned about that. And you, you should know that whatever entity you get, whether it be from us or anybody else for that matter, that it is legal and there's backup supporting the, the, whatever entity it is. We provide extensive legal backup to business trust with your trust package on PDF disk, which includes complete operating instructions and sample minutes. It's also got amateur second uh, on business trust. It's got several essays that uh, my partner Jim has found about using business trust in in business today. Um, so the, it's very extensive. And if you choose to look it up at a law library, you must go to the B's and boys section, as the business trust is a totally different entity than the trust definition you will find in the T is in Tom section. And a little personal note, when I was dating my now husband, I obviously told him about business trusts and how how cool I thought they were, and he got very excited about it. So he was living in Nevada at the time when he went back home after the weekend. First thing he did Monday morning was go to the law library at uh, University of uh, Nevada, Reno, and he asked. For the, he went to the law library, asked for the B section. He was directed there, and he was just astounded by the amount of information that was there on business trust. And he, oh, that's realized, awesome. he realized by reading it what a, what a valuable instrument it was. So, so um, do, do I need more than one trust, Carol? You don't need more than one right now. Right now. If you have gobs of currency and you want to do this and this and this, set it out first, that's fine. Uh, obviously, you can do that. So while it's not necessary right now to have more than one, post survey you probably will. Uh, and we have real estate trusts, vehicle trusts, management trusts, charitable trusts, not 501c3s, but charitable trusts. And many people among our clients are already setting some of those up. Okay, I want to have this, I want to have this, and I want to have that. And even if they haven't gone ahead and purchased those trusts yet, you know, they, we've talked about them. So we can make a list. Everybody has in their mind what's going to happen after this event. Okay, I've got my money now. Carol, I'm, I want to do this real estate trust and this, this, that, and the other. Right. So it's very important to get some of those things done. Once you have this kind of money, you do not want to have anything in your own name. Right. So the trust is obviously going to hold the money, but you don't want to contaminate that trust by putting other things into it. So we suggest, as Jim has always called it, the mother load trust. That's what holds all the, the money, or right now it's just holding the currency. But after that, if you want to buy a house, buy a house in the name of another trust. You, know, you could purchase it in the name of that trust if you've already set it up, or you could purchase it Judy Smith or and or assigns. So when it's time to close, the assign would be the name of the trust that you've chosen. So the same thing for, a, you know, you can buy cars that way. If you are into multiple pieces of real estate, you can have a management trust. So you can have one bank account instead of 10. And the charitable trust is not... As I said, not a 501c3, it's more specifically, okay, I'm going to put X dollars aside, and this is just for my charitable giving. So those are all things to consider, and again, you don't have to do them right now. Yeah, exactly. But, yeah. but it's a good idea to, for each of us to be thinking about that exactly. based on our own individual uh, things that we're going to do once we get funded. So, Carol, how long does it take to get a business trust from you? Well, right now, turnaround time is generally three to five days. Post RV, it will be considerably longer, as well as more expensive. Okay. 
Um, how much does a business trust cost? Our business trusts are still just fourteen ninety five. Secondary trusts and trusts for family members are eleven ninety five, and we accept all major credit cards. And if you refer a fully paid trust client to us, we will send you three hundred dollars, or credit you three hundred dollars toward another trust for yourself. And let's. Judy, let's stop again and see if anybody has any questions because we're pretty much at the end right. of our questions. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, guys, any question on your mind whatsoever, uh, now's the time. And I'm sure if it's a question in your mind, it's probably a question in somebody else's mind as well. We have uh, quite a few people on our call today, but so I taught you all really well. <laughs> it's you have. <laughs> However, there are some names and telephone numbers here I don't recognize, so if any of you folks that are new to this call have some questions, now is a good time. Hmm. Nobody, really. This is going to be a really short call. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, Judy, I guess we are got our last question. My goodness. Okay. So do we... Um do I need anything else to complete my estate planning package, Carol? Estate planning is more than just taking care of the money. Estate planning is, okay, I need to make sure that my kids know what's going on or my family or whomever knows what's going on. So we recommend and offer what we call a triple play. And the triple play consists of a pour over will, a durable power of attorney, and a um, health care directive. And the cost for the single one is 275 or 350 for a couple. And we do have a question here. Okay, excellent. Good morning, area code 707. Good morning, good morning, Carol. This is Anitra. How are you doing? I'm doing well, Anitra. How about yourself? I'm doing great. I just wanted to say um, I want my, you know, because my daughter is going to be um, working with me, you know, eventually when we get all the RV starts and we get our family uh, office going and all that, right? Uh-huh. Um, I just want her to listen to, what we, you know, some of the playbacks. And so I know you have a playback uh, that we can all listen to, right? Yeah. Um, okay. Okay. So that's, that's – I just want to make sure you will have these on the playback. Yeah, this call uh, is being recorded. I have missed recording a couple of them, <laughs> but <this laughs> being recorded. Most of them have been, and there is one on YouTube as well. If you go to YouTube awesome. and just type in business trust, I'm, I think the second or third one down. Okay, perfect. Yeah, that's perfect, yeah, because there's so much good information. And you have, like I said, I, I don't have a lot of questions myself, but um, – because I've, I've written down, you guys are so thorough, and I've written them down, and I've got everything pretty much ready to go. So, um, oh, good. Yeah, so I, All right. I Thanks, appreciate Nita. it. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay, we have another caller, an 800 caller. Good morning, Carol. Good morning. Is this Charles? This is Charles. Oh, okay. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Sweetie, how are you doing? I'm doing well, and is it Judy with you? Yes, Charles. How are you today? I'm doing great. How are you doing? Excellent. Hey, I have a couple of things that uh, I wanted to reinstate that almost left my mind, but um, I know one of them is I, I reiter- I'm going to reiterate it. I did it on a previous call. Oh, this is the first one. Um, I wanted to ask you, um, post-RV, how long will the replays be up? Uh, I don't know. I I think until I decide to take them down. So they'll be there for a while. <laughs> they'll, be there, they'll be there for a while? Okay, oh, yeah. good. Yeah. I mean, I'm, okay. I'm going to continue for about six months after the RV. Gotcha. And uh, as long as I keep getting report, reports from free conference call that you pe- that people are listening to the calls, I'll keep them up. Good, good. Okay. Okay. I, the second question is, um, not question, but I wanted to um, just go over again the importance of um, maybe there are some new people on the line, which I believe there are, uh, the por- importance of um, education, of your children, 
that you plan on um, allowing to be successful. And I just wanted to throw this in that you can give an example like my kids. Some of my kids, one of my kids, uh, they're about 43 years old. Well, age does not make them be ready for this kind of a blessing. If this is just overwhelming to us and we are still learning and it's going to be placed in our hands, how much more serious it should be with us making sure that they understand because sometimes over the period of years that we have been listening to these calls, we don't realize how far we have come just to be in a position to be able to have knowledge to handle this kind of wealth. And as I said, I have five kids. The oldest one, is they're in their 40s, but they are not ready for this, not raw, right out the ground like this. And how important it will be before I give, I won't give money, but I'll give education first, and then they'll receive the money because my whole thing is, in the passing of generational wealth, you cannot just come and give people money because they need it, whether it's your kids or someone that's close to you. So I'm a stickler on uh, making sure the money that I give don't become a fish sandwich, but it becomes a fishing pole. <laughs> so my old, my old, if he thinks that he's ready for it because Teenagers are like that, but then you, you have other kids that just have, that's just their uh, uh, nature, that they think they know it all. So what I'm going to do with them is they'll be required to learn about this trust because it's going to be very important that they don't mishandle the money. So I just wanted to uh, reiterate that uh, so that some of our first-time listeners uh, maybe just... Uh, haven't been on the call that long will understand that that was just my comment and I'm going to go back to the side. Okay. Well, thank you, Charles. I mean, that is an excellent, excellent uh, suggestion. As I mentioned earlier, you know, you can name your kids as successor trustees and a lot of people still have minor children. Okay. So they want their kids to eventually be trustees. So, So they name an interim successor trustee in the meantime. So that person needs to be educated. And the kids, you can't say, okay, when they're 18, I want them to be successor trustees. 18-year-olds are not going to be able to handle this. (laughs) Oh, Um, goodness, no. They're not even, their brains aren't even finished developing. And, I mean, it's an enormous, the money that we're going to get is just an enormous responsibility. So while it is a blessing to us, it is also as I said, just an enormous responsibility. And our jobs as trustees is to be good stewards of that money. So part of being a good steward of that money is making sure that your successors know what it's all about. And Charles, your idea of having them listen to all these calls is fantastic. And one of the books booklets that you get on the PDF disc is how to operate. Actually, the first two or three are more about trust in general, like what you can avoid uh, by having one of these trusts, what about a will, that kind of stuff. But when you get to book number four, it's how to operate. It's very important that you all take a look at that and read it. I suggest even printing it out because there's a whole lot in there about writing minutes and how important they are, and the right ways of doing this, or the wrong way, and what will what's the result if you do it the wrong way. So, Charles, uh, thank you. Thank you so much for that uh, commentary, because it was um, well-timed, very well-timed. <laughs> okay, we have one more caller, area code 202. Yes, ma'am. Uh, good. Good afternoon. I have a business trust that's domiciled in, in uh, Nevada, and I want to know how I need to, how, I, how the steps I need to go through to have it re-domiciled in someplace else that's um, like, like Wyoming. I heard you mention that earlier. Okay, well, how do I change it? If you get a mailbox in Wyoming, if you um, drop me an email later, I can send you the address of the box shop. 
you need to establish a new address, and then you need to let the, um, let the IRS know. And there is a, a form specifically for that. I think it's 8822B, or what I've always done in the past is just take a copy of your um, EAN letter on the second page and write, please change the address. Please note that the address of this business trust has changed to and put the new address in there. But like I said, if you send me an email, I'll give you all those directions. Okay. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Anybody else have any comments this morning? Let's see. And let's see. Somebody. <laughs> <laughs> Manuel, I see that you're there. Do you have any comments this morning? No, I guess not. Okay. And uh, see, we've got. Uh, we've got, um, who have we got? Daphne, do you have any questions this morning? No? no? Okay, all righty. Well, it is only 1034. <laughs> Judy, we've gone through this quickly. It's amazing how long it takes me to put one of these things together, but how quickly we go through it. Um, but that's good that everybody seems this, that that everybody feels this comfortable. I think that's a real testament to how well you do, Carol. Well, thanks, sweetie. That's very nice. I do appreciate that. So I think uh, with that we can probably call it a day. And I'd like to thank you, Judy, for your assistance today. Oh, my pleasure. And thank you all for your attendance and attention. And oh, there's Daphne chiming in. Hang on. <laughs> Daphne, how are you doing? Daphne? Daphne? Oh, maybe she's not there. Okay. So, anyway, <laughs> thanks again for your attendance and attention. Uh, once again, my name is Carol Worlius. My phone number is 425-820-8090, and I'm available between 9 and 5 Pacific time. My email address is info, I-N-F-O, at indicator, I-N-D-I-C-A-T-O-R, information.com. Um, please feel free to email me at any time with any questions you might have. I'm, I'm really trying to be really good about getting back to emails quickly. I hope this has been an informative call uh, for you. I look forward to hearing from you soon. And with that, I can say, go RV. Have a great week. Yeah. <laughs> go enjoy RV. <laughs> yeah, we enjoy the sunshine when we can. Our next scheduled call will be November 11th. And from what I hear, what I'm hearing, we might not have to wait that long for things to happen. Right, exactly. Oh, thank, thank you, Carol, so much. I hope you, you and Jay have a great weekend. Thank you, Judy. Thanks again, everybody. Appreciate it. All your right, time. everybody, have a great weekend. Thanks. Bye bye. Bye bye for now. Thank you.